Good morning and good afternoon to our viewers around the world. I'm Kate Seeley, Vice President for Arts and Culture at the Middle East Institute. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our panel exploring the future of festivals with a lens on the Middle East. We're joined today by a stellar group of panelists who will be helping us to better understand the impact of COVID-19 on cultural festivals in the Middle East and internationally. How are they as festival directors adapting and rethinking their festivals and what kind of impact is the change environment around festivals having on artists, communities, and local economies? I just wanna note that cultural festivals are hugely popular in the Middle East. The region has enjoyed an explosion of festivals of every kind, film, music, theater, dance, and more over the past two decades from Morocco to the UAE. And this has introduced uh, new energy and excitement to audiences, provided new platforms for Arab talent, and helped boost local economies. And more recently, festivals promoting Middle East culture in Europe have cropped up, giving Arab talent new international platforms to promote their work and connect with broader audiences. It's been an exciting period for festivals. Today, however, because of the pandemic, festivals and artists are surveying a very changed landscape. Festivals have been canceled and postponed or gone online, and directors are having to face tough questions about their future, their sustainability, and how to adapt to this new world of uncertainty. Here to talk about these issues are four people who are very involved in the arts and cultural sectors and festivals in particular. And I'm going to introduce them in alphabetical order, and I'll be brief since you can find their full bios on our website. Joining us from Amman, Jordan is Ra'ad Asfour, He's the director of Amman's Al Balad Theater, which promotes emerging and established artists from Jordan, the region, and the world. In his capacity as a festival professional, he was executive director of the Amman International Theater, theater Festival for 10 years until 2004, and today directs Hakaya, an annual storytelling festival, and the biannual Al Balad Music Festival. From Abu Dhabi, we are joined by Her Excellency Hoda Kanu. She is the founder of the Abu Dhabi Music and Arts Foundation, Adma and the founder and artistic director of the Abu Dhabi Festival, which she established in 2004 under the umbrella of ADMAF. It's an annual multidisciplinary festival which features international musical, theater, and dance productions, and more, many of them co-commissions, as well as regional talent. One of the region's largest cultural festivals, it has hosted some of the re most respected names in the arts, from Placido Domingo to Yo-Yo Ma, under Ms. Kanu's leadership. From New York, we're joined by Mr. Ernesto Otone Ramirez. Mr. Otone Ramirez is the Assistant Director General for Culture of UNESCO, which has been very active in highlighting the terrible impact of COVID-19 on the world's cultural sector and advocating on behalf of support for the arts and artists during these challenging times, which he has been very involved in. Prior to this, he served as Chile's first Minister of Culture, Arts and Heritage from 2015 to 2018. And finally, from London, we're joined by Eckhart Thiemann, the CEO and artistic director of the Shubak Festival. It is London's largest festival of contemporary Arab culture founded in 2011 by the mayor of London. It's a biennial and in 2019 presented over 60 events in 30 venues reaching 50,000 people. Shubak is the recipient of the 2019 UNESCO Sharjah Prize for Arab Culture. Now moderating wow. the discussion is the culture reporter for National Public Radio, Neda Ulebi, who's covered most major cultural stories since 2000. She's the recipient of numerous journalism awards and fellowships and hosted the Emmy award-winning series, Arab American Stories on PBS in 2012. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We are deeply honored by your presence with us and we so look forward to all of your insights. Uh, but before we begin, just a few housekeeping notes. We look forward to taking audience questions through Zoom's Q&A feature, which you can all find on your screens. For those calling in by phone or watching our panel on the live stream, you can ask a question by emailing events at mei.edu. And if you have any technical issues, also mail uh, email events at mei.edu. Now feel free to ask a question at any time throughout the panel. Our moderator will be checking your questions and will incorporate as many as possible in our limited time. And with that, I'd like to hand the panel over to Netta. Thank you. Hello, panelists. Thank Hi. you so much for being here. Audiences, thank you also for tuning in. This is still such a weird and awkward way of doing things. And in some ways, I'm thinking of this panel almost as a microcosm of what we're talking about, which is how do we do something that we love doing in person, 
over Zoom. And I can't wait to talk to these panelists about how we reinvent something so, that's so important, the experience of coming together to experience culture, to bring forward new artists, to have these kinds of conversations in this completely new way. I'm hoping that we can talk most broadly and ambitiously about how the pandemic is going to change the way we encounter and experience culture together. But the people here are people who talk about festivals, who imagine festivals, who change the world by bringing people together. And I'd like to start, Your Excellency, if I may, by asking you, mm -hmm. you have changed Abu Dhabi, you've changed the Middle East with your work with this festival. You've helped transform this part of the world by making it a hub for arts and culture in the Middle East. You've had to cancel your festival this year. What has losing festivals like yours meant for Abu Dhabi, meant for your audiences, and meant for the artists that you work with? Thank you. Thank you for your oops. technology. One second. <laughs> I can manage, but maybe that's the problem. Thank you for having us. And uh, thank you for understanding the importance of the role of the festivals. In, in, in the world of culture, in culture, in the arts, in people bring in, in, in bringing people together to enjoy our creative mind, what we can give to humanity as a human culture. What happened during COVID-19 is definitely devastating. We lost our member of our families the world is still mourning. We are still burying our dead. It's a very difficult moment. But because of this difficult moment, to answer your question, the festivals are more and more important and needed for empathy, for hope, for the people to get together and know that we are there for them and there is always hope. And the hope comes with our creation, with our own existence. It's tough. And I think we all here have lost and lost a lot by canceling or postponing. And uh, for us, one of the devastating, uh, you know, uh, one of the most important uh, issues that we faced, uh, Nada, was the financial loss. Uh, and we are lucky to be in a, in a country where the government, the leadership, the, 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 the private sector and the public sector, and above all the people, the awareness of the people that festivals are not, it's like they are a need and not a luxury. So they stood with us, we worked through our loss and we stand again on our feet. And we are now looking for the future. And uh, this is in a nutshell, uh, what we uh, have experienced in terms of the change during COVID-19. But Nada, in the end, the future, you, we are responsible, we can make the future, it's our decision. And we decide if we want all to survive, we unite now in solidarity. We work together and believe me, Nada, the people, the public will follow us. They are hungry for culture, for creativity, for being involved. So this is how I see it, if I, if I may say, Nada. Thank you. Your Excellency, if I may ask a follow-up, what does yes. that mean for the festival in 2021? What have you taken yeah. from the past six months it's, that will reshape next year's festival? Next year's festival. So uh, we rebudgeted. This is, again, uh, the, the financial side. We were able to survive because of our partnerships, because of our international relations, and uh, because of a strong will from each and everyone involved in the Abu Dhabi festival. 
so the future, you know, Nata, during the COVID-19, we all discovered maybe, I and mean, my colleague, my friends here can, uh, you know, talk about it in more detail, the need to go online mm -hmm. uh, more than ever. We, may, I, we, were, we were online, but not in this way, the virtual experience, more on the virtual experience in the, in the, in the performing arts. So we will continue with that, but this does not mean that it's gonna replace the real life experience. And I'll talk about it later on. So we are going to continue in the performing arts. Uh, it's very difficult to do the social distance, distancing when you have orchestras and theater and uh, uh, web, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. So we will go online, we'll continue online uh, for the, in the performing arts smaller event in the performing arts, we will be, uh, you know, uh, having it on stage live performance on a smaller scale. And we will continue with our exhibitions because social distancing, distancing in exhibitions will be much easier to handle for us than in the, perform, as in the performing arts as in, you know, the big halls and so on. So the balance will be between the performing arts on the online and real life experience uh, with the performing arts in, in, uh, in, in the hall and uh, the, uh, the exhibitions will be more with the Abu Dhabi festival. So we have three exhibitions coming up in 2021. One with the, uh, will announce soon in Abu Dhabi and, and two others, one in Egypt and one in Germany. Mm -hmm. Uh, Neda, the whole, the whole future in finding this balance, in finding this change, if we don't change and adapt, we can't continue. So this balance between the virtual and real life experience. And the, again, I will keep on maybe saying this, nothing, nothing will replace real life experience. This energy that you have that created in the real life, in the real life experience, in a whole, with the people, the the the, the values that you share when you are together, uh, the idea that comes from being there at that moment, nothing replaces that. So we continue with both. Eckhart, um, if I may turn to you, I'm wondering, I, I know that you had a little bit of a reprieve because your your festival is a biennial, so you weren't no. scheduled to... to uh, um... our, uh, not the, our festival is annual. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. I'm speaking to, to Eckhart. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so you, you got a little bit of a, a, breathe, a breather. Um, what does this new reality mean for the artists that you work with? And what are the considerations that you're taking into account as you plan for the next year? Yes, so we are every two years and in June and July. So I have to say, I consider myself, I, I don't want to use the word lucky, but I, can, I was in a very different position than many of my colleagues that we did not have to cancel a whole festival or postpone it. Um, but what we had to do is postpone and cancel and change quite a lot of the early research and development phases, mainly artists' residencies. We invite artists to come to London to see who we are, where we are, where, where our communities are, uh, what locations are interesting in order to generate new and fresh and relevant ideas for the future. This, mm -hmm. of course, could be done, could not be done. Um, so we are now experience, experiencing quite a break, quite a sort of backlog of creative work that could have and should have mm -hmm. happened in the last six months. So a lot of our challenge at the moment is reigniting the conversation with artists where they are at. Have they been able to continue their thinking or their practice or their rehearsals? Do they have created new ideas? Is what they were working on initially still relevant now? Or should they create something in response to COVID-19? So everyone is so unsettled at the moment that I think what we need to do is have very wide ranging and quite fundamental discussions with all our partners, rather than say, we had to call a break, when COVID-19 is over, we 
pick up exactly from the point where we left off, whether we carry on. We cannot carry on. We actually really, really have to change. The other issue that we are really facing as a festival, and uh, Her Excellency used those two words, balance and solidarity very well, is we work in a very dense network of partnerships. We are not the only ones who control our venues, our locations, um, um, our, our audiences. So, and we are very aware that many of our partners are now in a much more fragile situation. We don't know in what position our theatres, our concert halls, our cinemas, um, our jazz clubs will be next year. Will they still be there? Some of them are facing fundamental um, economical problems. So we actually also need to reinterpret the landscape that we sit in and which partnerships can really still be meaningful and relevant and proactive next year. So, and when the pandemic started, I sometimes said in the early period, we were quite unaffected because we did not have to cancel. And I thought our difficult and uh, crisis period will probably be in about six, seven months time. Um, and this is where we are now. And I think this is our challenge yeah. now with less than a year to go. Um, and a lot of it unraveling and trying to regroup and re-piece together because we can't just pick up from where we left in March. Eckhart, how do you balance between the logistics of planning a festival, the, just the real logistics of trying to figure out what's going to happen when we have no idea what's going to happen, yeah. and uh, dealing with this more existential crisis of what is a festival and what is, what is the, the, our purpose and function as creative and artistic leaders at this moment? Yeah, I think the practical, the logistic science at the moment is that we all need to work on multiple scenarios. Um, and this is, can be quite tiring <laughs> sometimes. So every plan we do has a plan B and a plan C and a plan D attached to it. So this is the physical version. This is the physical social distanced version. This is the online version. This is the hybrid version. This is the indoor version. This is the outdoor version. So we need to interrogate each artist's work that we have into how flexible the work can be without losing its artistic integrity. Some work can only be experienced in one way. And then we need to look very clearly, what are the risks for doing that? And one work really demands international travel, physical space, very close proximity with an audience. Then we really need to interrogate what the risks are that that can be achieved. If that work could change and also be experienced online or we figure in a different way, then for that we'll need to go through our planning process. And these are actually quite exciting conversations with, with artists to have. Similarly, on you asked the more sort of philosophical question about uh, what a festival can look like. I think festivals will become more local and global at the same time. And we have a big respons responsibility now to our local audiences and to our local artists who have lost out so much in the last six months. While at the same time, as Kate was saying in the introduction, we are suddenly discovering a global audience that is getting used to online experiences that maybe we have not engaged with before. So a big challenge would be is to get this balance right, that the local and the global both have meaningful experiences and don't see each other as at either end of a polar um, relationship. Mm -hmm. This whole pl having the plan A and the plan B and the plan D is, is particularly heartbreaking, I think, in the arts world. Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone is having to do this, but in the arts, everyone is stretched so thin, often mm -hmm. working multiple jobs mm -hmm. anyway. 
and the the burden that this is putting on festival planners and then of course you know you have the 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 logistical issues that come with budgets i i'm, I'm sure many of the people in this audience know that for example just yesterday i think the united states just changed the amount of money required for artists artists coming in internationally for their visas it's vastly more expensive now and I, my stomach just sinks yeah. thinking about how so many arts festivals are now having to recalibrate their budgets and probably having to disinvite inter, international artists simply because of this added burden of the visa cost. Absolutely. And this, this, this is an uh, unexpected sort of expense that every arts festival planner is having to grapple with and will continue to have to Absolutely. grapple with for the next few months. Um, Rayad, you mm. have already had to cancel your festival in, in Jordan in June in Amman. And I have to tell you that Amman is the city of my birth. I have special feelings for Amman. How do you capture the feeling of a city, which is so important yeah. with a festival, when you're doing it online? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam. And uh, I'm so happy you, you know Amman. And, uh, uh, first of all, just I want to see uh, my festival, like uh, Shubak Festival, it's happened every two years, and next edition in uh, next year, not this year, but but we always organize a lot of festivals. Uh, we uh, have every year uh, El Balad Graffiti and Perform and the Street Art Festival and Hakaya Festival. This year, uh, the two festivals it postponed uh, uh, the graffiti. It's postponed till uh, October, and uh, the storytelling it's postponed till December. And also, there is a lot of uh, local festival in Amman, like Amman Jazz Festival, also postponed till uh, October, and all the activities online. Uh, absolutely, uh, the culture scene is very effective. Uh, because uh, from uh, March till now, there is no culture activity. And we feel that we are uh, uh, without uh, water and without uh, maybe food, uh, because uh, the festival is very important for the, for the life and uh, for the, also for the economy and for uh, the new culture. Uh, as you know, the festivals, uh, it's uh, support also uh, uh, a lot of musicians. Uh, it's part from uh, music industry. And uh, this scene now is, uh, is, uh, is like, uh, it's freezing, uh, difficult to work, uh, difficult to meet, uh, difficult uh, uh, to make any culture activities. Uh, even uh, uh, now we back to, to the school and this is maybe it's a good sign. And maybe this is a good challenge also for us, how we can back. Uh, I hope the festival can back like the school. Uh, we can uh, use the social distance, uh, but we should to meet face to face not in, uh, in online and uh, because uh, this is the, the I, I don't feel this is can uh, make uh, 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 the main uh, condition for the arts because we should meet uh, uh, I think also there is a good sign now happen after six months uh, this month uh, in Amman we open uh, cinema festival uh, in the open air and mm -hmm. this is a good thing uh, all the audience uh, stay in the car but uh, they go to uh, they go to the the, the cinema and uh, they meet us even uh, there is social distance but it's we should to start we should to back and and also um, I'm so in the TV about uh, the Venice film festival and also it, it, it's happened. And uh, I think we should to live with uh, with uh, COVID uh, eighteen because uh, uh, this is very important. Uh, uh, we should to use the sample like the the school. Uh, uh, even we don't know the plan and what the challenge, uh, but uh, we should to to work uh, the festival. To, we should to back, uh, uh, and this is very important. 
listening to you, it's it's making me think about my experience in the arts in Amman, the resourcefulness, the determination, the scrappiness to make it happen in a part of the Middle East where it's much more fragile economically. I'm, I'm filled with respect for you. How, Raid, do you see the pandemic affecting the future of the arts in Amman and in your part of the Middle East? Uh, absolutely. The Independent Festival, uh, we're not loosely in ideal situation. Uh, there is a lot of challenge. Uh, uh, the, first, the Independent Festival uh, have uh, maybe in Arab country, sometimes restriction of freedom experience, uh, political issues, uh, lack uh, in financial resources. Even this problem, the festival uh, finds solution to be alive and success to affect in the Arab culture. But now there is a lot of a ch of a channel, a challenge. Sorry, what's the plan? Uh, as Eckhart say, uh, there is A O B U C and D, uh, and tomorrow uh, nobody can. Uh, make a plan for tomorrow because uh, we should to be uh, in, uh, to know the situation every day or every month or every week and after that can decide. Uh, this is absolutely effect and uh, and also the, the musician have a lot of problem because uh, a lot of, of musician doesn't work uh, and uh, the, as I say, uh, the, the culture industry also it's oh, it's, it's it's freezing, and uh, we are in stuck. Uh, we in, in maybe in in the in difficult uh, problems, but uh, uh, till now we able to find solution maybe. A small solution, like uh, we are uh, make uh, when the uh, the pandemic start uh, direct. We open uh, a project. We start to make a app about culture agenda. But direct, we open culture agenda in uh, social media and Instagram and Facebook, and we put all the online uh, activities uh, from Jordan and Arab country and the world in this culture agenda. Uh, this is uh, maybe help us and help the audience uh, to feel how the artist uh, creative and can be able to be alive. And also the uh, uh, Music Festival uh, was part from festival maps and uh, this is uh, also uh, this is an initiative from Oslo World Festival. Uh, <clears throat> they asked a lot of festival director to put uh, uh, the songs uh, online. Like the song. <laughs> so, sorry, I, uh, there is a problem. I don't know what it's, happened. It, it's all right. It's, it's a phone that's beeping. Uh, right. you, you, so you were saying that um, the, the musicians in your festival can put their songs online and make them accessible. Yeah, and we, we, uh, uh, also music festivals, uh, they make initiative to ask uh, around 100 uh, music festival to put it uh, in music online uh, in uh, initiative called uh, Festival Maps. And this is a good, uh, simply good, uh, it's, uh, it's feel the, the, the festival is still alive. Uh, nobody knows what will make uh, next month, but uh, usually we find a solution. I just wanted to let the audience know, and, and th thank you, Rad, um, that our UNESCO guest is unfortunately stuck in a general assembly meeting, and he's trying to make it as soon as he finishes up his, his remarks, that hopefully he'll join us shortly. In the meantime, we have a question from the audience that I'd love to throw out to all three of the panelists. This is from Jumara Al-Tamimi, who would like to know, um, she has two questions. The distinguished speakers talked about the need to adapt and change. She'd like to know what is needed to adapt and change. Does that mean fewer festivals, smaller budgets? Of course, I don't think the answer is going to be yes to that one. Fewer artists, perhaps more careful curation. And the other question is, what is the role of technology in promoting arts and culture in the future, in your opinion? We've talked about social media, but is there something that isn't is perhaps a little less obvious that we should be thinking about? So adapting and changing, um, and technology. 
Uh, Madam, may I answer this question? May I try please. to answer this question? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Adapting and changing what I'm for, for me for the Abu Dhabi Festival. I think our ultimate for Abu Dhabi Festival and myself, my ultimate concern in adapting and changing, do not forget the artists. We need to find uh, ways of income through our festivals to, for the artist, the musician, the creator, the thinker to live. One, two, we need to make sure that we, the intellectual property, al mulkiya al fikriya, is protected. When we go online and we have this, you know, concern everywhere in the world, uh, the adapt and change can be made. Can we we can make still the festivals on the level that we all know that is we are proud of by co-commissioning, co-producing, partnership. That is the when we co-produce, co-commission more than one festival. The lady who asked this question. We, we you can she will be sure that she will come and attend a festival because the level is still there of the production of the of the creative the creative in, uh, uh, the creative you know stage that we all know in the Abu Dhabi festival will still there the income for the artist is still there the intellectual property is is uh, is protected and when you go online art has a price you pay to go to buy. So you need to be ready to do that. And uh, so uh, this is the future. And, and the Neda, for the lady who asked this question, we have, the, we have suffered in the festival, but in the festivals, but uh, what we have suffered and the countries themselves have suffered. The economy, the social economy of every country have mm -hmm. suffered. And we need to go back to when we have the festivals, the, 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 the tremendous, the tremendous support that, bring, that it brings to the economy of the city will come back. So I, I hope I answered her question, but these three uh, you know, points, investing in the artist income, going back to invest in the artist income, income, income. This is where the musician can survive, the composers, the artists, the performers, the directors, and the intellectual property online has to be re, re, uh, how revisited and re-evaluated the protection of your creative, creative online. And for we, I love when I have like the lady who asked the question, people who are concerned because this means they are aware, because it means they are aware of the value of the art of the festivals, of the creation, uh, of, of what we give to humanity as human, which is culture. So thank you for this question. Thank you, Nada. Eckhart, uh, Raed, do you have thoughts about what adapting and changing actually is going to look like in the future and interesting new ways in which technology can help guarantee yeah, uh, festival survivals? Uh, also, I want to add uh, about uh, maybe also the technology can help us because, you know, in, uh, if, in you, if when you make a live uh, concert, uh, there is a, 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 difficult, a beautiful impact. But now how we can build this impact for the audience uh, online. Uh, the live uh, music direct, I think uh, uh, there is a lot of problem in the live uh, the music direct because uh, the voice, uh, the sound is very uh, bad sometimes uh, and uh, maybe there is lay uh, in uh, the connection. Uh, we should find a solution how we can record uh, the concert uh, with a good uh, conditions and put it online. And also this is uh, very expensive. And uh, uh, I agree with uh, Your Excellency, we should, uh, the, the, uh, the culture is, uh, uh, is very expensive now. And uh, we should to, 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 to pay for the culture, we should to, to pay for all the people work in, in the music and culture. This is very important to take, uh, to, to receive uh, a good impact from music, uh, from uh, theater, from cinema. This is very important. I, 
Agree. First of all, I want to say festivals have always adapted and changed. We are not operating the same model that we did 50 years ago or 100 years. Yes. And why I think Her Excellency brought this out because artists change and artists create different works for different times, for different contexts. And we follow mm -hmm. those artists. Sometimes mm -hmm. we nudge them a little bit to go into a particular direction too. And I think as long as artists are at the heart of it um, and the connection to an audience, we will adapt and change. And I think festivals can be the pioneers and avant-garde of this. We, we, are, we don't have our own infrastructure. We as festivals can change, can reimagine from edition to edition mm. who we are and what we do. We are much less bound than a manager of a theater that has a thousand seats nailed to the ground and can only present one type of work. We could move the whole festival next year outdoors. We could do it all online. We could do it all small scale rather than big scale. The decision lies with us. And I think this is where festivals have a real opportunity to pioneer new models for the wider cultural sector and to entrust artists to try out something new that they may not be able to do in the more conventional touring circuit or exhibition limitations, um, because we can, be, we can be flexible. And technology comes into that. And when you're talking about adapting and changing there and the role of technology, I know that I will need to get much more expertise and knowledge in from my much younger colleagues. I'm not a digital native, um, I'm not a social media native, and I think where the new models and talent there is, is with a much younger generation than myself. So I need to go out and look out and be very open to trust a new generation of creatives to take that technology angle forward because I'm not well positioned for that. Her Excellency pointed out very wisely, income, income, income. Ra Ed pointed out that the quality of technology can have a huge, make a huge difference when it comes to what it's like to experience these festivals online and technology is not free. We have a question from Rim Amalda Dunn, who's the, uh, the, one of the co-founders of a virtual theater festival called Basita, who brings up the very salient point that here we are together talking and at a free event, how do, we, how do we overcome this barrier of asking people to pay to attend a virtual online event? How, how does that bar get lowered? How, how do we manage to afford to pay artists, to pay festival administrators when we're so used to the experience of things online being free? How difficult will it be to move towards online paid events? Mm -hmm. Uh, Madam, may I, I answer this question? Please. Thank you. Uh, first, I would like to uh, to say uh, one to pick up uh, on my what on when, uh, what Edgar uh, Eckhart said about our festivals moving. We can move around. We're not we're not nailed in one hole. And I love that. And you know, uh, <laughs> Eckhart, we 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 perform under the stars. We have no yes. problem. You know. Uh, for this, you know, how can we uh, work closely with our public to encourage them, uh, you know, to pay, like when they go to the movies, to pay the ticket or to, you know, to participate in uh, uh, financial, uh, financially, uh, to go online and so on. I think, Nada, for me, it's very simple. When something means, when something means something to you, when something has a value to you, you will pay. When you connect with something and it means to you, you will pay. And I believe in my public. I believe in my people. I believe in the people of the world. Humanity, I mean, we had many Renaissance periods. We had great civilization. They came from us, the people. People protected their civilization 
So they will protect their artists. They will invest in their culture. They will invest in their artists because they know the value. It's coming. It's a very difficult period. We try to understand the situation as well in the festivals, I would say. Uh, make it, you know, uh, as easy as possible and uh, support, sponsor, many individuals will sponsor uh, tickets, will sponsor, you know, uh, funding for, for, for other people to be able to come in. Uh, this is how I see it happening. I don't worry. People will follow because they believe in us. They believe in their culture. They believe in their artists. They believe in the, in the capacity, in the creativity, in the cultural industry. It's a difficult period. We will cross it. I have no doubt. This would be my answer, Nadia. Mm -hmm. Maybe I add to this, I think we will need to educate our audience to pay for online content. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, we are not the first ones. People subscribe mm -hmm. to Netflix mm -hmm. and Amazon films. Mm -hmm. This is uh, paying. It's about the content. If, if what we offer is relevant, authentic, and genuine, and there's a demand for it, people mm -hmm would would pay. I think why at the moment there's an expectation for free content is because the content is a substitute of the life experience. So you don't see the theater company live, you see the film instead. So mm -hmm. it's somehow a reduced version of the mm -hmm. real work. And I think there where I can understand a certain reluctance mm -hmm. for people to mm -hmm. pay. If it's really original, authentic material, um, I think there will be a willingness, but it does need cultivating. But mm. with that goes, who will then have access to it? Most of our festival content is free of charge, and this is actually part of our ambition mm. and our ethos to bring culture to those sectors mm. in our community who may not be very regular theatre goers or opera goers or concert goers. So, and to offer free experiences. And I think we need to look at this online as well. And this will need either donors or sponsors or foundations that support mm -hmm. that work um, to ensure that there is an equality of access and the payment is not necessarily a barrier. Mm, absolutely. Rod, what about yourself when it comes to the economics of your festival, your festival, since you do several of them? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with my colleague. Uh, and I think uh, now the, uh, we are in, uh, in emergency conditions. And uh, maybe now this is the solution. But let's uh, uh, think about how we can use uh, this emergency condition for the future. Uh, and maybe uh, if we pay online, and uh, this is uh, a good opportunity to find also uh, more solution, uh, solution for the future. Uh, maybe I can see a concert in uh, London uh, uh, and I, I'm stay in my home in Amman. Uh, with good condition and I feel the, the concert, uh, I have a good uh, uh, sound technicians give me a, a good sound. Uh, I feel the light. Maybe the, also the technology solution can be more uh, creative uh, to give me the good impact if, uh, if I'm stay in Amman and I have a concert in, in London or uh, Lebanon or uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 Brazil. Uh, this, uh, uh, let's think about how we can uh, uh, use this uh, opportunity. This is what I think now. Maybe uh, we are in uh, facing a, a new challenge, but we should to find uh, um, more windows in this challenge to, to continue. Uh, 
but uh, even I am I'm like the life music, uh, the life concept, uh, life theater, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, all the people. Uh, but we should to uh, to 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 think about uh, the future, uh, and uh, we'll find solution. Absolutely. Which leads in many ways to, to the next question. A few people have asked about how collaboration has changed for you in the pandemic era. How do you share resources? Arts are often, as one, as one questioner points out, a, there's not a lot of resources. People often have to compete. How have your relationships changed? I'd love a specific example. How are you working with members of other arts organizations differently, perhaps, than you were before the pandemic? Uh, in the Abu Dhabi Festival, uh, Neda, we have uh, partnerships, and Shabak Festival is one of them, and we did uh, wonderful work in the past. Uh, again, Neda, is what, what, uh, how, how is it possible? It's, again, we go to co-commissioning. We go to co-productions. We go, the, 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 the cultural industry is based on helping each other. So we need to reach out to each other. We need to think together and to create together. It's, uh, it's, uh, we, we, the, latest, uh, the, latest Coco, the latest production we had in the Abu Dhabi Festival was with the Metropolitan uh, Opera in uh, Lincoln Center. We had it, uh, Wagner, uh, the Flying Dutchman, and it was fantastic. Now we, we, we moved, it's gonna continue on 2022. This is one of the co-productions that we were, we were three festivals, three Abu Dhabi festival, uh, uh, can, uh, can, uh, uh, the, uh, I forgot who was with us, would you believe that? But uh, we came together and at the Lincoln Center, at Opera House, Lincoln Center, uh, at the Metropolitan Opera House, and we, we, it was fantastic. None of us could have done it on his own, on, uh, by himself, none of us. We came together and it was possible. And this is what will remain for humanity, for the future, for the future. When we say, when we speak, what happened in this era, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the creative industry, what happened in this era to add up on our civilization, we need to see what we do, what we did. And the, this, the, the recreation, the co-production of the Metropolitan Opera House of uh, Verdi, uh, the Flying Dutchman will be part, one of them. What we are doing now, it's gonna be announced recently, uh, very soon in the, in the festival uh, 2021 with the Oud Forum. Uh, it's gonna be online, but we have, multi, we have artists from maybe, maybe everywhere from the, in the world that are coming together and it's a new commission and production. And it, it, it gave income, it gave ideas, it, great ideas, ways of seeing things in, 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 the, in, the, in the traditional Arabic music, uh, uh, composition and so on. All this will happen. So this, this, is, this is the way I see it, uh, Neda, if, uh, if I answered your question, uh, if I gave you the right example. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is, this is it, uh, Nada. We work together. We find each other. Online today is very easy. And, uh, and we forge sincere partnership based on mutual respect on understanding each other. And we will all survive. That's it. Thank you. Eckhart, um, Raad, do you have thoughts about your, how your relationships and collabor collaborations may have changed over the past six months? Uh, I think um, uh, not to change, but uh, maybe now it's more solid because uh, our collaboration with the festivals, uh, with the artists uh, now is more solid because uh, we are in the same level, all the festivals. Uh, and maybe... Uh, we work together or we can collaborate or uh, the, uh, discuss together to learn uh, how we can 
go next step uh, even who can uh, make this this next step uh, if i uh, open my festivals i have uh, a new solution and maybe this i have a, uh, maybe a new experience i can give him to my friends uh, next month uh, and uh, absolutely all the festivals is ready to help uh, and uh, and we are feel uh, this is the solidarity period and uh, we we need uh, every festivals uh, to to open uh, all the resources uh, and uh, how we can uh, me and Eckhart and uh, uh, the festival can use uh, even small but this is help because uh, the solidarity uh, should uh, to to give us uh, 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 push and more uh, 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 more power uh, to continue. I, oh, please, Zachar, yes. Um, no, please go ahead, Matt. Oh, oh no, I was curious. So how? Um, um, I think. Um, I think we are seeing a greater level of sort of collegiality and just openness and honesty with each other in the sector at the moment. Because we are all facing problems, we're actually quite open about them. We don't hide them anymore. We say, you yeah. know, we, we are facing this situation and then trying to find the common ground to move, mm. to move from there. Um, we at Chewbacca at the moment are still in the middle of recalibrating our partnerships. So it's a little early to see what really, really has changed. But I want to give one very small example um, where th through technology, um, and through a new approach, very new um, relationships between artists and our stakeholders have happened. We have a group of 18 to 24 year olds um, mm. that we work mm. with called Young Shabak. They mm. were planning a live event in June. Mm. This, of course, mm. could not happen. Um, and they then rethought, completely rethought a new way of thinking and came up with this fantastic idea of Beatty Baytech, which was to, um, to bring together uh, Shabak alumni artists with some very young artists in various Arab countries through an open call that they would curate, uh, curate and they would encourage to work together for a very short period to bring a snippet of a work that brought um, uh, a story from life and confinement to a wider audience. So here we have young people in London, aged 18, 19, 20, reaching out to artists in Cairo, in Abu Dhabi, in, um, uh, in Berlin, collaborating with Shabak alumni for something that had such an international dimension, was so quickly brought together um, and I thought this is a whole new way of working. And it was all done through technology. It was all done through um, Zoom mm -hmm. calls and Instagram Live, um, et cetera. So I think we will see very different partnerships also with different stakeholders. So it wasn't the festival director ringing the other festival director. It was a young 18, 19 year old getting yes. directly in touch with some of our artists in order to create something mm. new. It's wonderful, it's wonderful. How are your festivals actually addressing the pandemic? Are you commissioning works that speak to the moment? Are your artists creating other examples that, that, that address what's happening right now? Uh, Neda, in Abu Dhabi festival, we're doing both. The, we, ha we have commissioned, we have work now that uh, during the pandemic, the, 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 the artists, uh, you know, their experience during the pandemic, but also what the future, the hope, their work of the future, you know, the pandemic, it's, it's very funny. It's very strange. The pandemic made the artists more resilient. And it's, it's incredible the, the, you know, what, what I'm seeing in terms of creation and innovation. And I love what my, my colleague uh, from Shabak Festival, also from uh, Riyadh, from Jordan, about the young generation, how they, you know, 
they, uh, their, their innovation, their own creation. Then the 19 year old, you know, comes to you and, tell, and gives you ideas and so on. And this is all, it is, you know, this will of, of, of the humanity to survive, to keep on going. And at the heart of it is the artist. So uh, we, ha we are doing both, uh, Nada. But, uh, but in the end, what I would like to, to say is that no matter what, we connect. We connect and we find, we find, you know, uh, we, 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 we find each other. And we unite through our festivals to fight back. The people are waiting for us. They want us back. We fight back together, and uh, and that's it. We just have a, about one minute left. May I ask uh, the, our other two panelists if there are very quickly if there are ways in which the your festivals are speaking to this moment? Uh, I, I, for for me, uh, I think about uh, the audience the question or maybe uh, we can make uh, survive uh, with, we can open uh, a hotline with with the audience about how the audience uh, see the the, the the festivals next year uh, what do they want from uh, from us as, as a artist organizer how uh, what expect from us and how we can uh, give our relation uh, more uh, solidarity and more power. Maybe this is an open question between us and the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think this is, will help us to, to discover uh, an, a new method and a new way. Uh, uh, because we are, we, 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 we are, we work for him and and uh, they love us and they support us uh, and they give us a lot uh, usually. And uh, absolutely, if we ask him now uh, about uh, what they expect from us, absolutely will give us a lot of maybe magic solution. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would also say I don't, at the moment, I have not asked an artist to specifically create a work around COVID-19. I do observe that a lot of artists, of course, are exploring ideas of isolation and fragility of life and how to communicate when you're not physically close. That's inevitable. So I think our role is really to be sensitive to those thoughts as they come through rather than directly ask an artist to, to, to give them already the, the theme. But I think the other point that's very important is um, that Raid was talking about, we don't know yet where our audiences will be next year when we come around in June, what psychological state will there be? It, where we've come out of COVID-19 and the last thing they want to do is being remembered of you know, the difficult period they're going through. Is it, is it the period where glimmers of hope um, have to emerge? Is it the one where a gentle coming together is the most appropriate um, offer we can give? This is something that we at the moment still need to work through, but I'm very sensitive about that the work that we do present may not be literally connected to COVID, but has to, of course, be linked to the period we are going through now and has to be relevant and authentic um, next year. And that's quite difficult to predict at the moment. Thanks to all three of you for your tremendous work of public, uh, of, of making our world better. Unfortunately, our um, UNESCO Assistant Secretary General was not able to join us. He sends his regrets. I'm sorry that he wasn't here, but I wanted to thank you again for your work nourishing and sustaining us during this moment of crisis. Thank you for your answers and for your generous participation. Thank, thank you, you Nada. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Nada. Nada. There is always hope.